Hey friends, it's Andy. I am in the basement at my house. I have been working most of the day, uh, a couple of meetings and then upstairs. And th this has gotten to be, I really think, the quiet space that I like to get away. Uh, this is where I work out in the mornings. Some of you seen the pictures. Uh, this is where I record the audio books. This is where the shipping station is for all of the books, paperbacks, hardbacks, shirts, hats, all that kind of stuff that's on the online store. And uh, there is a workstation here. Uh, it was a legit uh, workbench, you know, bar height, three feet deep out of plywood. I don't know, maybe 12, 14, 15 feet wide, half the width of the house. And uh, I guess this is where, when I was renovating the house, had all the tools and worked on stuff put lights together, assembled fans, stored items. And so that's where we do all this stuff. Now, uh, what I want to do is for this episode, and I'm guessing probably two more, I want to talk to you about one of my favorite topics that I realize I haven't spoken about in really a long time on this website, on this podcast, and so I'm going to go back and grab some old information about physical healing. Now, I've talked a lot recently about emotional health, emotional healing, soul wholeness, but not physical healing. And many times those two actually are connected. I do want to draw your attention, as I always do, down to the show notes. If you'll take a look there, I have something, as I always do, free for you. Uh, there is a mini course and a 24-page PDF that I put together several years ago. Uh, if you go there to the show notes, you can get that absolutely free. Start watching a couple five-minute videos that are going to talk you through some of these concepts that we're discussing. Uh, there's also a book that I wrote several years ago. We have a few copies of these left, and so uh, we've made them available really, really cheap. Uh, it's called Supernatural Healing, Super Practical Health, the oils of the Bible and you. And right there, we're talking about they would lay hands and anoint people in the scripture. And so that book is available. And then there is a full-blown healing workshop down available for you as well. So if you want to go all in, grab the full-blown course. If you think, ah, you know, I might want to tiptoe, grab the book. Uh, if you just want to explore something that's free, take advantage of that mini course right there. Okay, so the book that I put together about, oh man, it's it's been about nine years ago. No, not that long. Seven, I think it started the journey maybe nine years ago of teaching this. Uh, but the book, maybe a little bit after that, it highlights three different points that I believe are all equally important uh, think is the first. Think it's the starting point. Our actions and how we behave and what we do, it always originates with your thoughts. Your actions really reveal your beliefs. We either live based on truths or untruths. Sometimes that doesn't mean we're lying. We might just be mistaken. Uh, but whatever the case, without right thinking, the foundation is not really important. And, and I would say even the foundation for healing. And so I want to start off in this talk about healing, really discussing the concept of thinking right and not just thinking right about all things. You know, the Bible talks about being transformed by the renewing of your mind, Romans 12, 1 and 2. Uh, Proverbs 23, 7, as he thinks in his heart, so is he. All these verses about thinking right. I want to talk specifically about thinking right about the concept of healing. And that's going to take us all the way back to thinking right about who God is. So, who is the Father? Uh, and I promise this is going to go towards the topic of healing pretty quick. First thing you got to remember is Jesus reveals the Father. So he told the disciples in John 14, 9, in the upper room, the night before he was betrayed, tried, executed, that 
he came to show them what the Father is like. Um, We've talked about that a lot on this podcast. He came to show us who God really is. Colossians 1.15 says he is the image of the invisible God. If you want to see what God has looked like, you want to see what God talks like, you want to maybe take a study of how he would interact with people, look at the life of Jesus, and there you see a perfect representation. For that reason, Hebrews 1.3 says he's the perfect imprint, the exact replication, meaning a precise duplicate copy of the Father. He reveals the Father perfectly. Uh, John 5.19 tells us that when Jesus was walking on earth, he only did what he saw the Father doing. Like somehow he had this window into heaven of what God's perfect will for him was in that moment, what the Father wanted him to act upon. You know, think, wouldn't that be a nice attribute for all of us? He saw that, and he walked that out perfectly. That means that in every instance where Jesus is doing something, we actually see what the Father in that moment was desiring for him to do. So get very practical. That means when you see Jesus uh, interact and preach grace and freedom to a woman caught in adultery, uh, John chapter 8, he's doing that because that's what the Father was doing. It means Jesus actually touched the leper rather than healing him with a word because that's what he saw the Father doing, Mark 1, to somebody who was disconnected, who was lacking human touch. It means that rather than shunning tax collectors and the big catchphrase, quote, sinners, he dined with them because he saw that's what the Father was doing. Now, notably, we see this with the things Jesus did. We also see it with the things Jesus did not do. We do not see Jesus condemning people because That's not what the Father was doing. But we never see an instance of him condemning people in the New Testament. He he gets absolutely frustrated with the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the religious elite of the day. We never see him condemning people, though. Uh, We don't see him watering down truth. We don't see him backing off and say, well, you know, your truth is your truth, and what's right for you is right for you. He doesn't go there, but neither does he condemn people. It's almost like he takes this third option that we don't readily see in our culture today. We also don't see him as it relates to healing. We never see an instance of him causing sickness, illness, disease, even though in our culture today we hear people say things like, God gave me, and then insert the name of the disease, or God chose me for, and then insert the name of the ailment. Uh, Other people say things like, God gave me, insert the name of the illness or physical hurt, pain. God gave me that in order to humble me, to teach me a lesson. We, We never see Jesus do any of that. Now, let me just insert an idea right here. You you think about if God gave you, let's just use the example cancer because I've heard that one several times. If God gave you cancer, why, if that was God's will, why would you go to the doctor to heal that? Or if God gave you a certain infirmity to humble you, why would you argue against that? Why would you not just accept it and go, oh, he's teaching me something, you you see? Or if God chose you for a certain ailment, why not just say, well, I was chosen for this. Let me just endure it. If God gave it to you, why would we pray for healing if it was God's will for you to have it? See, one time there was an episode where the Pharisees came to Jesus and they said that he has a demon. By the power of demons, he cast out demons. And Jesus said, no, 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 uh, no. A house divided against itself can't stand. If 
if I have demons, why would I then be casting out demons? Well, why would I be passing demons out and getting rid of them at the same time? You just make the correlation. Why would he be causing illness and then at the same time casting out illness? Why would he bring something that's an ailment in order to eliminate it? Would he not be schizophrenically arguing with himself? And I, and I get it. This is such a complex idea. And in the absence of us knowing why, you know, we're not, we're not going to have all the answers this side of heaven. And in the absence of knowing why, often we search for an answer and we prop on the sovereignty of God very readily. And so it must be because he selected it, chose it, did it, even though the scripture doesn't say that. Now, Jesus totally totally tells us plainly what all of these ideas mean. Uh, In John 12, 45, he clearly says, If anyone has seen me, they have seen the one who sent me. This is why 2 Corinthians 4, 4 tells us, Paul writing, post-resurrection, post-ascension, Jesus is the image. He is the likeness of the Father. Uh, Several years ago, I read this book uh, by a man named Jack Frost. The name of it, Experiencing Father's Embrace. He says, Jesus came to demonstrate who the Father is and what he is like, and he does so through his words and his actions. Uh, Another book that I read by a man, Jack Deere, surprised by the power of the Spirit. All too often, many of God's children mistakenly assume their afflictions are evidence of God's judgment on them. So as we talk about this idea of physical healing, I want us just to begin in the place, uh, here's the big word, theologically, setting things in order Theos from God, ology, the study of God, what we believe about God, setting things in order and just thinking right about he doesn't call sickness, illness, disease. He's not inflicting you with something. He's not judging you when something occurs. Sometimes we just don't have the answer. Uh, Scripture says this, Jesus went about healing everyone. That's in Matthew 4, 23. It's in Matthew 12, 15. Now, in in the next episode, I'm going to talk about what does it mean that he healed everyone? That that is such a, uh, it's not loaded. It's it's just a, again, complex thing. complex statement that he was healing everyone. And I really believe if you'll journey with me on that, it will bring a degree of freedom to you and empower you to see some things a little differently. Uh, Throughout the scripture, we read too, particularly New Testament, Jesus actually used healing miracles. What about healing everybody? Use that healing of everybody to confirm his identity, not call his identity into question. Now, lately, it seems that sometimes we think that if something supernatural happens at a church, people are being healed. There was even a book that came out about this several years ago, uh, Charismatic Chaos, that if you see something that's demonstrative of power of the Holy Spirit, such as a healing— that it's probably made up and it's probably a demon. The odd thing is in the New Testament, Luke 9, 2, Luke 10, 9, Jesus used healing miracles to confirm his identity, not call it into question. A beautiful passage um, when John the Baptist is imprisoned. Remember, John the Baptist was Jesus's cousin. Um, John the Baptist's mother, Elizabeth, was related to Mary, Jesus' mother, 
And when Mary went to see Elizabeth, when she was pregnant with Jesus, John the Baptist is said to have leapt in his mother Elizabeth's womb. He also was a miracle child. Uh, Elizabeth and the father, Zechariah, were in their old age, weren't supposed to be able to conceive, had prayed for decades to have a child. It never occurred until the moment when Zechariah went into the temple, it's a longer story, and said that you're going to conceive. And, and he didn't believe it. Um, but the child, John the Baptist, came. Now, John the Baptist is preaching, you know, make way, Jesus is coming. And John the Baptist is eventually imprisoned for preaching. And from prison, knowing that he's probably going to die, which is eventually what happens, he's beheaded. He sends questions to Jesus via messengers. Are you the one, or should we look for someone else? Or are you the one? Now, you got to remember, John the Baptist is the one that baptized Jesus. He even said, I would not have known it was him, except for I saw the Spirit of God descending upon him like a dove, and I was told, the one upon whom you see the Spirit descend, that's the Son of God. And then the heavens were opened, right? And a voice came and said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. So John asks, after all of that, are you the one? Pro probably just showing us that even as much as you experience, as great as the exploits that you do, still still human, still subject to question and doubt and so many other things. Are you the one? My, my guess is he knows it's probably over. Just, just affirmation. Just, just making sure that I didn't live it in vain, that I didn't walk out this cause. Jesus sends back words and he says, go tell John the Baptist this, and he quotes the Old Testament. The blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the dead hear, the dead are raised. All these healing miracles. And he goes on for sure and says, the poor have the gospel preached to them. Blessed is he who is not offended because of me. So what I want us to do is as we step through just a few talks, I want us to start thinking right about this entire thing about, about healing. I, I want us to start landing in a place where even if we don't have all the answers, even if we don't have a complete explanation, we're, we're okay with that uh, because we know that Jesus came to show us what the Father is like. Jesus never condemned. He never inflicted anyone with illness, disease. In fact, the healing miracles were the mark that he's present. Now, if the kingdom is present now, which you and I believe that it is, it opens the question then, should we not see physical healing today? And I, I believe that we should. My prayer for you as I sign off is that the Lord would bless you, would keep you, be so gracious to you, shine his face of favor upon you, and may you see him, not for the clutter that maybe you've heard in the past, not through the lens of wounds of what you've seen even in other people or how you might have been taught inaccurate things. That's going to happen. May you rest truly in who he is and see him as he is. That's the foundation for healing. Grace and peace. I'll talk to you again soon.